Boys is a show developed by Eric Kripke of the fantasy drama Supernatural fame for Amazon Prime Video. It is adapted from the popular comic book of the same name by Garth Ennis and Derek Robertson. It follows the titular group of vigilantes in their quest to combat the corrupt superpowered individuals or soups and the evil corporation Vought, which controls them. The Boys provides a depiction of superheroes which is more grounded in reality, unlike their depiction in their traditional media such as comic books, where they are shown as beacons of virtue. In this show, they are characterized as extremely flawed creatures who are very much human. Originally intended to be a trilogy of films in 2008, it never materialized due to creative differences between the then-director Adam McKay and the studio. Eventually, Cinemax would take over the production of the title turning into a television series which would start airing from July 26, 2016. Eight years since its first release, the show has gone on to have a total of four seasons and several spin-offs due to its immense popularity. It was announced in May 2024 that the series was being renewed for a fifth and final season. The show is not only loved by fans but by critics as well, having been nominated for eight Emmy Awards and having won seven Critics' Choice Super Awards. The show takes creative liberties from its source material, including the creation of some soups that are exclusive only to the show. One of these soups is the topic of our video today, her name is Cindy. Cindy is a powerful soup who is presented to us as an antagonist of sorts during the sixth episode named The Bloody Doors Off. In the second season of The Boys, during the episode Kimiko, Frenchie and Mother's Milk sneak into the St. Grove Hospital to investigate it after Starlight finds emails from the place in Stormfront's laptop. There, they find that it is a center for the testing of Compound V on adult test subjects. They witness the presumed dead soup lamplighter incinerating a non-compliant test subject on Stormfront's instruction. However, as they are escaping, the trio are caught by a lamplighter and a scuffle ensues during which he accidentally melts the door to Cindy's cell. Out steps Cindy and we soon discover that she is no ordinary person which should have been evident by Lamplighter's scared tone when addressing her. She is an extremely powerful and dangerous soup who has extraordinarily strong telekinetic power that she can use to devastating effects. In fact, she displays power levels and durability that are arguably at the same level as that of the Seven. To find out more about this, be sure to stick with us right to the end as we discuss this and more in our video today. Cindy bears a striking resemblance to the character of Eleven, played by Millie Bobby Brown in another hit show, Stranger Things. There is an uncanny similarity between the two characters from their appearance, origin to their powers. Despite appearing for only a single episode in the second season of the show, she has managed to capture the imagination of fans of the show to this day, with powers capable of probably even killing Homelander in an instant. It is no wonder that she is a hot subject of debate and theories amongst the fans of the show. Even though we are now in the fourth season of this extremely popular title and there are a plethora of cool characters that are loved by the fans, Cindy just doesn't seem to leave anyone's mind. Fans are continuously hoping that she makes a return and we get to know more about her and see her in action once again. Just like Cindy has invaded the minds of the fans making her one of the most beloved characters in the show, we are going to try and enter her mind and give you a total rundown of her character, from her origins, personality, powers, and weakness. We will be using our own limited telekinesis to leave no stones unturned regarding Cindy. So without any further delay, let's delve into the minds of one of the most powerful soups in the boys. But before we go into explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, then please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you and let's begin. What is the origin of Cindy? Most of Cindy's early days are shrouded in mystery, with not much being known about her before her incarceration at the Sage Grove Mental Facility. We know that at some point in her life, she was admitted by her family or loved ones into St. Grove's for treatment for her mental health. We cannot, however, discount how nefarious Bot is as a company. She could easily also have been coerced or kidnapped to the facility. It is also known to us that at St. Grove's experiments regarding the refinement of Compound V and its application, on adults were being conducted. This is because Compound V works best when it is injected into infants. Its result on adult subjects can be a hit and miss, sometimes with devastating effects. She is considered one of their best test subjects due to her gaining powerful telekinetic abilities, which are similar to that of Eleven from Stranger Things. Unlike in the case of Eleven, where she reaffirms her role as an individual with her moral compass still intact, by refusing to join Henry Creel, aka One, in his plans to eradicate humanity, 
Cindy's leanings remain mostly ambiguous as all we get to see in her introductory scene is her causing mayhem and death in her rage against her captors. Just like in Eleven's case from Stranger Things, she is also subjected to various experiments in the laboratory to exploit her telekinetic abilities. Judging by her hostile actions, she has been held against her will. The experiments that she was subjected to seem to have been of an inhumane nature because she goes on to slaughter almost everyone of the staff she lays her eyes on. Unlike Eleven, though, she isn't rescued by a bunch of people who she would later see as friends. In that regard, she is more akin to Lucy from the anime Elf and Lied, who, just like Cindy, has extraordinary telekinetic powers that she immediately uses to wreak vengeance on the people who conducted experiments on her the moment she is set free. We also have another reason to believe that Cindy's origin is steeped in horrible, torturous experiments because of what Lamplighter tells us. Through Lamplighter, we find out that there are regular casualties amongst the patients caused by the experiments, as his job is to dispose of these unfortunate individuals. We can only imagine what Cindy has been subjected to for her to lash out in the way she does when she is finally set free. We have another video dedicated to her origins on our channel. Be sure to check that out if you need a more in-depth guide. You're dressed like his friends. I don't like liars. Personality and Development of Cindy Cindy is a deeply scarred and vengeful individual, but there is more to her character than just these traits, which we will explore now. When Cindy finally escapes her captivity, it takes very little time for her to lash out at the guards and staff of the hospital. This can only be because she has deep-seated trauma related to the treatment she was given in the hospital. We are not told if she always held this violent streak even prior to her hospitalization. But what we do know is the experiments were bad enough for her to go on a murderous streak of revenge. In this regard, Cindy is not similar to Eleven, who is more innocent and childlike. Although they both have seen bloodshed concerning an escape attempt, Cindy was the perpetrator while Eleven was not. We feel it would, however, be a disservice to the character of Cindy if we were to simply dismiss her as a murderous, traumatized killer. There is no doubt that those are a part of her character, but there are certain traits she displays during her short screen time, which you might have missed. First of all, though, it doesn't take her long to start killing people. She initially confronts Mother's Milk, Frenchie, and Kimiko along with Lamplighter and tries to verify their identity. The fact that she doesn't outright slaughter them despite them wearing the uniform of her tormentors, but engages in dialogue shows she doesn't just kill for the sake of killing. This is further reaffirmed in her final appearance where she's seen walking down a road and trying to hitchhike somewhere. As Cindy walks down a road, she signals a passing car for a lift, which ignores her. We see that it does go on to stop a little ahead of her. She then proceeds to get into the car as it drives away. This scene is supposed to leave the audience in a cliffhanger, with most assuming that she killed the driver and hijacked the vehicle. This is however disputed by some astute viewers who have a different theory. If you look carefully at the car, those of you with a keen eye will notice that Cindy actually gets inside the passenger seat of the car. You will also notice that the indicator for the car is switched on, implying the car was parked voluntarily. This implies that she didn't murder the driver, which further reaffirms the point that she doesn't kill merely for the sake of killing. We can also note that she chooses to free the rest of the inmates of St. Groves first instead of killing Frenchie and the gang who were fleeing from her. This is the second hint we are given that she's not totally a mindless killer. There can be two reasons she opens the doors. The first one is that she feels safe that she needs their aid as she doesn't know the security situation of the facility. The other is she feels strong empathy and wishes to free everyone who suffered like her from their place of torment. It is important to note that she already shows more empathy than many of the soups created by Vaught despite her bloody rampage. Most importantly, by doing this, she establishes her humanity rejecting the notion of being a mere product and test subject for Vaught. One other thing that we see in that short outro is a hint of a smile on her face. This lets us know that through all that murderous rage, there is a person in there. In the show Stranger Things, Eleven is afforded the time to develop and mature her character and form bonds with the people around her, but Cindy is not given this luxury. Ultimately, we feel Cindy is definitely not the psycho she was initially presented as. If given more screen time, she has the potential to become a pretty well-developed and powerful character in the show. It would be interesting to see if she chooses the dark side or becomes one of the good guys, with good and bad being extremely gray as it is in The Boys. Powers and Attributes Just like her origins, the full extent of Cindy's powers remains unknown to us. 
but we do get to see her display at least some of the things she is capable of doing. Quite frankly, there was a good reason she was kept under such tight security because if I was foolish enough to torture an experiment on someone this powerful, well, I'd watch my back as well. These are some of Cindy's powers and attributes. Enhanced Durability Cindy displays immense durability in her fights against both humans and soups at Saints Grove Hospital. Starting with when she's still deciding whether to kill Lamplighter, Kimiko, Frenchie, and Mother's Milk. She gets shot multiple times by a security guard on her back. Every single one of those shots hit her, but it hardly even made her wince. She shrugs it off and makes short work of the culprit. With this, we can establish she is an above-average soup as some level of durability and immunity to things like bullets is pretty standard for the upper echelon soups. Of course, she confirms her place in the totem pole the very next moment with what she does to the shooter. The biggest testament to her durability, however, is when she gets zapped by Stormfront with her electric powers. All it manages to do is knock her out and that too for not very long, as we see her walking down the road hailing a car later, knowing that Stormfront is one to never pull her punches. We believe she electrocuted Cindy intending to kill her. And that only goes to speak volumes about Cindy's toughness. There are also no visible signs of any damage caused to her by Stormfront's attack. At the end of the day, this means she is an individual capable of tanking damage from one of the seven, meaning her durability makes her a threat even to some of the most powerful soups in the series. The fact that she is able to tank gunshots implies that she is impervious to piercing attacks as well. We have yet to determine the extent of her durability regarding this, seeing how she survived survives Stormfront's attacks, we infer that she is also capable of enduring energy attacks. However, how well she will hold up against Homelander's heat vision is up for debate. Stormfront's attack managed to incapacitate her, although momentarily. Does this mean that someone with a more potent attack can kill her? There are other questions such as whether she will survive in extreme conditions, her immunity to blunt force, etc. What her kryptonite is, the upper limits of her durability are yet to be explored. Nonetheless, from what she displays, she definitely puts herself in the upper echelons of soups in the series. Here again, Cindy stands out from the character by whom she is supposedly inspired from. Eleven, although an individual with extraordinary abilities, has nowhere the same durability as Cindy. Cindy is literally shot and electrocuted and still survives. We do not think Eleven would survive these things. Furthermore, the conditions of Cindy's incarceration are suggested to be way more horrible than Eleven's. We feel one of the points which is easily overlooked when it comes to Cindy's durability is her mental fortitude. Yes, she is traumatized and scared, but she has to have tremendous mental durability to stay sane through all those horrific experiments that regularly claim the lives of patients. Telekinesis Cindy is believed to have arguably the most potent telekinetic ability in the entire show. What makes her terrifying is that she knows how powerful she is and isn't afraid to use her powers to kill anyone she perceives as a threat. In her opening sequence, she casually crushes the unfortunate guard who chose to shoot at her into a mist of blood and flesh, plastering his remains all over the door behind him. There are many soups in the boys' universe who are capable of turning a regular human being into a puddle of blood. What makes Cindy different and scary is the ease with which she does it. You can tell she isn't even using 5% of her power. She also uses this power to crush open several extremely reinforced doors designed to imprison superpowered beings. This implies that these doors are extra strong and durable, and for her to rip open a bunch of them all at once is no small feat. Now, some of you might be wondering if she's strong that she can force open these super tough doors with her powers. Why didn't she do so to escape her imprisonment much earlier? We have a couple of theories regarding that. Firstly, since she's been being experimented on, she could have been under a drug therapy that dampened her powers. The second thing is maybe there is a power dampening system, like an energy field of sorts that acts like an EMP but on the superpowers in those rooms. Once again, we can see why comparisons are drawn with Eleven from Stranger Things with both of them having access to powerful telekinetic abilities. Eleven, however, has her powers and abilities more fleshed out, which is why, as it stands, she is way more powerful than Cindy. She is seen not just showing psychokinetic abilities, but also the ability to open interdimensional portals and banish people to alternate dimensions. Eleven exhibits these powers at a tender age of eight. There is much we don't know about Cindy for now. Her current power levels make her one of the most powerful soups in her universe. 
But who knows what other powers she's yet to manifest. One of the most critical questions that arise when you consider Cindy's telekinetic powers is whether there is a range in her ability. Is that why instead of squashing Frenchie and the gang as they're running away, she redirects her attention to the doors of the inmates? It is something to ponder about. Regardless, it should not be doubted that she did not mean to free the inmates because of reasons stated earlier in the video. Another thing that will hopefully be fleshed out more if she makes a reappearance is whether her powers can only be used in a destructive manner or whether she has finer control over it, just like Eleven. What are the changes Compound V brought on Cindy? Other than her enhanced durability and telekinetic powers, we know that Compound V has undoubtedly changed her in some way or another. This is to be only expected because the drug literally changes regular human beings into superheroes. Compound V gives all of its users a baseline upgrade that includes enhanced strength, durability, sometimes intellect and hearing. It alters the human body at not just a mere superficial physical, but at a cellular level to achieve their transformation from regular folks to soups. This results in some gaining specialized power besides the baseline abilities mentioned earlier. In Cindy's case, this was her telekinetic abilities. Therefore, it is safe to say Cindy possesses super strength as the compound has granted her strength way above that of a normal human being. Although she most likely won't be able to hold her own in the battle of the bronze between herself and someone like, say, Homelander, she will easily wreck a regular person. It is also only natural to expect that she possesses super hearing as well. Just like she wouldn't be able to match Homelander in a contest of strength, her hearing is probably nothing compared to someone like Blindspot, whose special ability is enhanced hearing. She does possess hearing that is way better than that possessed by regular people. What are the weaknesses of Cindy? In the world of superheroes and villains, there are only a select few individuals who can claim total invulnerability across all publications and mediums. Most superpowered individuals come with their own set of weaknesses. They are the so-called proverbial kryptonite to speak. There are no weaknesses as such that are explicitly mentioned when it comes to Cindy, but we can infer some just by looking at some of the things she exhibits during her short screen time. Dependence on her hand. Cindy is seen using her hands extensively to manifest her powers. For instance, she is seen making a crushing motion with her fists every time she uses her power to crush something or someone. It is quite evident from this that unlike Eleven, who can use her powers with or without the use of her hands, Cindy is entirely dependent on them. So if someone were to be able to restrain her hands or destroy them, she could be rendered harmless and easily killed. This can be done by a number of soups very easily. For example, Homelander can easily crush or rip her hands off and Maeve could do the same. There are a number of soups who could render her hands useless. Knowing how shrewd the boys are, especially Butcher, who wouldn't put it past him to come up with a plan to keep her distracted enough to destroy her hands, just think about all the soups he's been up against, including how he managed to kill Translucent, the invisible hero with seemingly invulnerable skin. We think if she had been able to use her powers like Eleven, she would probably not have faced the problems that we have just cited. It is an irony that the very things that activate her powers may also be her biggest weakness. In experience, while Cindy's powers are devastating when she unleashes upon regular people or someone unaware of her powers, we feel that she would stand next to no chance against someone with a lot of battle experience. The fact that she was caught unaware by Stormfront and was not quick enough to unleash her ability before getting zapped by her ability speaks volumes about her inexperience. Having been trapped for a long time inside a hospital has resulted in her becoming extremely out of touch with the outside world. She has no clue about the boys and their capabilities, nor does she know about the various new soups and their powers. She also has next to no combat experience other than slaughtering regular humans. Given the fact that she needs to focus on the targets she seeks to destroy, there are a plethora of soups like A-Train and Black Noir who can easily overwhelm her. The boys are used to battling soups and with enough prep time, someone like Cindy, despite her deadly powers, would probably not stand a chance. Besides these two glaring weaknesses, she could also be incapacitated by high-frequency sound waves due to her super hearing being sensitive to them. She could be disoriented enough for someone to land a fatal blow on her. Also, as mentioned earlier, someone with enough powers to overwhelm her durability could kill her. Someone like Homelander could dismember her, or a soup like Victoria Newman could simply kill her without her even realizing what hit her. Though extremely strong and durable, Cindy is by no means invincible. Marvelous Verdict 
Cindy as a character is very intriguing as it is left to the audience to piece much of her character together. There is an ambiguity to her, from her origins and moral compass to the extent of her powers and her place in the universe of the boys. This makes it incredibly fun for the fans of the shows to speculate and create fan theories about her, as she could literally be molded into anything. Her comparisons to Eleven from Stranger Things were almost inevitable since her inception. From their hairstyle and origins to their powers, the similarities are extremely striking. While most people know that she is being speculated to be inspired by Eleven, only fans of the comic book know this next important bit of trivia. She was largely speculated to be the show's version of Silver Kincaid because she shared a lot of similarities including gender, powers, mental state, and origins. This theory was however debunked in the third season of the show. The trope of the mentally unstable superpowered character with telekinetic abilities has been explored extensively in other mediums as well, like Jean Grey in the X-Men and Lucy from the anime Elf and Lie. Therefore, it would be unfair to say Cindy is a mere parody of Eleven or Silver King Kate, even though she has a very limited screen time and appears for merely a single episode. She manages to capture the audience's imagination, something some characters do not manage to do, even as a part of the main cast. As one of the soups that was exclusively created for the show, we hope Cindy makes a return in a future season. There are so many things that fans would like to know about her, including how she would measure up in battle against some of the most powerful characters in the show. We hope you've had a good time trying to figure out and explore the anatomy of this enigmatic character from The Voice with us. Thank you for making it to the end of the video, stay healthy and be sure to keep watching for more exciting content like this on some of your favorite shows, movies and anime right here on Marvelous Videos. If you like the content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone!